Hello everyone and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy Full Breakdown. Today we're going to be talking about something a lot of people overlook and are not really looking into and it's honestly the combat system in this game. Now I get it, this game is immense, it's extremely immersive and there's so much to explore because it is probably one of the greatest RPGs of the 2020s if not 2023 as a whole. So before we continue on, I do want to let you guys know there is a giveaway going on on my channel right now and it is so easy to enter you just have to subscribe and leave a comment down below anything you're excited for in hogwarts legacy to be entered to win a playstation 5 xbox or pc version of hogwarts legacy of your choice now sit back grab a snack and enjoy as i take you with me on to the adventurous world of hogwarts legacy now the combat system in this game is extremely immersive in the sense that you are able to choose and learn the spells and actually choose your path moving forward now now, as we know in the Harry Potter series, there's two main routes you can go. You can go for the good or evil and there are spells for such paths. Now we are not sure if you are able to actually transition in between the two freely, but what we do know for sure is that the Collector's Edition which comes with the Deluxe Edition of Hogwarts Legacy includes the Dark Arts Pack which is once again has those insanely immersive dark spells. A set that gives players a unique battle arena and dark wizard cosmetic items. Now, from what we've known so far, this is probably the only, in a way, quote unquote, microtransaction in the game. What Avalanche has pretty much put forth is that there will be no microtransactions in the game, which I think is absolutely amazing because then it just makes the playing field extremely equal for everyone. This pack also includes the rideable Thestral, a winged creature that resembles this dark lore skeletal horse in appearance. But in addition to this, which is why I wanted to highlight this in the beginning, beginning of this video is that you'll be able to take part in the dark arts battle arena this arena seems to come with the deluxe edition as i mentioned but you can also get it in the dark art pack too if you choose to buy that individually so it sounds as though the base game will have two battle arenas available for everyone in the dark arts arena we see our character face off against waves of enemy using the unforgivable curses to defeat them just going straight in with avocadavra to kill an opponent which is that very well known green spell we've all grown to fall in love with we see different enemies and spells in action as well as other aspects for instance there will be a chinese chomping cabbage that you can let loose at enemies you'll first have to buy the seeds and grow them and the focus potion which you'll make from lacewing flies flux sweet stems and duck bog tongues now this is a lot of information to digest because it tells you how immersive this combat system is now would i recommend getting this dlc for this 100 yes because alongside all these things that are open to you 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 will actually get 72 hours early access to the game so that meaning before february 10th 2023 now once unlocked by the player the dark arts battle arena will be located in the sinister forbidden forest as i've shown you guys previously in my past video on the grounds of hogwarts as the name suggests the arena will be a place for players to hone their skills in the dark arts within a combat setting facing off against waves of enemies as i mentioned previously and also the dark arts include the iconic unforgivable curses now more of these these unforgivable curses besides avocadabra or crucio imperio to fully test the intricacies of each spell in a high octane combat scenarios without the stake of story driven battles which i think is very immense because at the end of the day when you're progressing throughout this rpg massive open end world and just doing all the quests you do want to kind of take time to hone your skills with the spells testing and mastering these specific spells will be imperative for any dark playthrough of hogwarts legacy which is why i say this can be huge for content creators like myself because it allows us to actually do a full game playthrough of hogwarts legacy where we are playing as this quote unquote good wizard or witch. On the other hand, we can do a full dark playthrough because all these choices you make actually affect your progression and end of the storyline because at the end, your ending is going to be completely different based on the choices you make. So, nevertheless, going back here, the importance of this dark arts battle arena is that it makes the decision to restrict it to special editions questionable. The many players opting for the title standard release will completely miss out on this future. So, 
at the end of the day, is this a micro transaction or not? I mean, it is a pretty big DLC a lot of people have their eyes on. Considering how unforgivable curses have been such a major point of discourse for Hogwarts Legacy, hiding such a special way to use these spells seems counterproductive. Now, do let me know below in the comment section what are you guys' thoughts on this? Do you guys think this should have been just open to everyone? Or is this so valuable that it should be behind a paywall? I would love to know your opinion. Now, I do want to touch on this because I don't think I really spoke much about it, but when it comes to learning the spells and all these basically cursed, unforgivable spells that not only are in the DLC but also available to everyone that just has the regular standard edition of the game, is that there will be classes you attend to learn these spells. Now, the importance here is that at the end of the day, similar to the Harry Potter series, which is why I think this is one of the most immersive RPGs out there, is that you will be greeted with spells and classes and homework to do so that you can learn these spells. Now, it's going to be from a classroom environment, going out into the world, venturing out on your own, riding your griffin or riding your flying broom, and honestly getting out there, experiencing these monsters for yourself, fighting them, and then eventually getting into these dark arts battle arena or any battle arena that's available for you outside of Hogwarts to test out your skills and hone your spells. Now, like I mentioned, will there be repercussions for learning these dark arts spells or going the dark route at the end of the game? And how does that impact your progression? Will it actually change your ending? Will it actually alter which NPCs you speak to? Which is why I think maybe switching in between dark arts or just good spells or evil spells how will all that progress into the game? Let me know what you guys think of these points that I covered. Do you guys agree, first of all, with the DLC being hidden behind a paywall? Like I mentioned, the Dark Arts Battle Arena has so many utility spells that are very useful for any wizard to progress throughout the world. Now, generally speaking, when there's a big DLC, it shouldn't be something that will actually hinder your progression, and it should be primarily cosmetic with certain benefits. Dark Arts Battle Arena has so many benefits, so should it really be a DLC or should it be open to everyone now circling back to wrap up the combat system in hogwarts legacy is that typically speaking your ui or user interface you're going to be greeted with the spell diamond what this is basically is the four spells that you can maneuver and move around in position and this is coming from a total of 20 plus unlockable spells meaning there is so much versatility for different player setups for example you have close range far range all the different magics and masteries so there's going to be a lot of guides on youtube and different content people are going to be making depending on different people's play styles for example let's say you're playing through the snow and this is going to be huge because all these different biomes that we have in seasons that are going to be circled around in hogwarts legacy are going to affect your combat right let's say you're in the swamps or you're flying high in the snow and depending on the different mobs and monsters you're going to be fighting is going to depend on different spells you're going to be using so certain monsters are going to have certain weaknesses or certain boosts to their stats very similar to any rpg out there or even mmos in general so this once again does bring up a lot of questions us as the player base have so once again as we continue on to wait this one month upon release i'm going to be doing lots more breakdowns and guides to help prepare you guys for the release of hogwarts legacy and when it finally does drop i'm actually going to be doing lots of different guides for different playthroughs so definitely do stick around and subscribe to be entered into giveaway everything hogwarts related thank you guys so much for all the support on the previous video i'm gonna keep pushing out hogwarts legacy content and as always we wrap up this video make sure you guys do drop that comment down below letting me know what are your thoughts what are you mostly excited for in hogwarts legacy i'll catch you guys in the next one take care and see you in hogwarts